so many people don't even realize how deep this really goes. Like, <laughs> like what do you even call this? Like a rabbit hole? It's, it's pretty outrageous. More people should be talking about this. Physical media is so important because the digital media situation that exists today, it's just become a centralized way to keep all films and media in one spot so that way it's easier to control, manipulate, censor, even completely just eliminate films altogether. I'm not talking about digital media that's released purely by individual independent filmmakers like myself. We're talking about capital H, Hollywood. Because if we could just move everybody to a space where digital owns all, then we could essentially manipulate and control everyone's viewing experience from one centralized location. Hulu, Paramount Plus, Amazon Prime, they might go by different names, but make no mistake, they're all part of the same, they're all cut from the same cloth, so to speak. Digital media and streaming is only an illusion of ownership. You don't really own anything. Let's say you own a physical copy of Donnie Darko. You own the right to view it with your own like media players, DVD, let's say you have a DVD of it. Now let's say you buy it on Amazon Prime. You spend 10 bucks or so to buy it on there. You don't own the right to view that media. You own the privilege of being able to watch it on their platform. They can remove it at any time. This has already happened, actually. A woman named Alyssa Miller wrote on the website nofilmschool.com. In this article, she talks about how she paid $14.99 to buy the film Amelie, uh, which is a French independent film that is hailed by many as being one of the most pioneering, important films in independent cinema. So she paid $14.99 for this film. Not long after that, actually, it was removed. Not only was it removed from Apple TV, but it was removed everywhere. She couldn't find it on any streaming platform. It's as if the movie didn't even exist to begin with. And that's because I believe it was Miramax that was the studio that had a lot of issues with its licensing. Uh, and so unfortunately, this film in particular became a victim of the problem that surrounded its distribution company. In this case, it was a licensing issue. Now, if she were to go down to a used bookstore and find a copy of Amelie over in the video section, and she were to bring it home with her, she could plop that baby into her DVD or Blu-ray player as many times as she pleased. That, that movie is not going to disappear, but it did when she got it on Apple TV. So that's interesting. It, there's many examples of this happening. There have been multiple movies, TV shows that have had licensing issues like this, but also license changes to where one particular streaming service has access to this one now because they own the rights to this distribution company and now they no longer have access to it. So it doesn't matter if you bought it directly. There are so many factors that could cause a film to disappear. And because of that, it calls into question the implications that it has on consumer rights and control over their own media that they purchase. The quality in streaming services is never going to be as good. There, there is a huge difference between 4K HD on streaming and 4K HD through like Blu-ray. It's going to look much better on a physical copy. Why is that? Well, that's because we have compression rates. You have audio and visual compression, and that plays a role in how things are uploaded into an online situation rather than being written directly to a physical media. But also a big one is throttling. You'll lose your quality because certain companies, depending on the tier you have purchased for your internet, will throttle <laughs> your s speeds so that way you can't get the most out of your HD content. And that's a whole other problem because that comes from the corruption of the internet providers. So the corruption of internet providers and the corruption of digital media from the film industry, they're butt scissoring each other. 
from a filmmaker's perspective, digital media and streaming and all that has huge economic implications for filmmakers. It comes down to, you know, with a, with a physical copy, it is a physical thing that you're purchasing and that money goes towards the overall sales. While with a lot of streaming services being subscription-based, you know, it becomes a lot harder to delegate those things. And filmmakers, a lot of the time, and, and actors, actually end up making less. So because of that, it's become more important now than ever for box office returns to be high for these films. Because once they hit streaming, how many people are gonna buy these on DVD now in this era? Since COVID, it's even harder because a lot of these movies, instead of being released in theaters, are going straight to streaming and bypassing the theater system altogether, which is harming filmmakers even more. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of censorship. Of course, censorship is involved with this. Because if you live in a space where you're in a centralized system of media, where you know, you've got these few streaming services that control mass media, essentially, it can be easily done. We don't have to worry about burning VHS tapes or burning DVDs. Let's just remove it and they won't even notice that it's gone. <laughs> We've seen this before when Netflix pulled a Patriot Act episode from its Saudi Arabian market after it criticized the murder of a Saudi Arabian journalist. And this just plucked, gone. And there's been other examples of this too that are less noticeable. Netflix removed a particular scene from Back to the Future Part 2 when he's flipping through a magazine and he's like, ooh la la, ooh la la, ooh la la. Now I remember that because I always thought it was funny growing up. I remember, you know, watching it on Netflix and being like, what the hell, wait, what? Did they change something? Yeah, they did because they wanted to make it more kid friendly. Now apparently they fixed it and they had some kind of excuse about, you know, I don't even remember what the excuse was. We've seen, and we've also seen, you know, streaming services remove scenes from The Office, from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. We've seen this happen multiple times. It's no secret. Not only do streaming services have the ability to go in and pluck certain episodes and films from existence as if they were never made, but they could also go in and alter and change things. That is the definition of censorship, removing or altering art that was not made or belonged to you. That censorship. It basically goes into what I was saying earlier about how big mega corporations and the government are, you know, ooh la la. Democrats love to say that it's all corporations fault. Republicans love to say that it's all the media and the government's fault. It's all of it, honey. It's all of it. It's all one big giant piece of turd. Algorithms are also a big part of this. And because of algorithms prioritizing what's considered mainstream, we're also seeing a, a gradual deletion of, you know, older films, more avant-garde experimental and surreal cinema. I can't find a David Lynch film on streaming anywhere, um, particularly Inland Empire. I had to buy the physical copy of that to add to my collection because I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I've tr <laughs> I have not seen that movie since like 2010 because it is nowhere to be streamed. These algorithms clearly prioritize more um, accessible mainstream content and over time we're seeing a decline in cultural, historical works and more experimental avant-garde films. Unless, for whatever reason, like Skinamarink, it's trending. If it's an avant-garde film that's trending, then ooh, by all means, let's put that in the algorithm. But if it's not being talked about, then it no longer exists, out of sight, out of mind. And on top of all that, physical media preserves the filmmaker's original intention. They put it on, they sign off on it, they say, this is what I want. If it's printed on a digital media, nobody can go in and change and, and, and delete things from your work if it's on a physical copy, you will always be able to watch that film because you own the right to be able to view it. Just pop it in to your DVD player, your Xbox, whatever you have, and watch it and enjoy it. Key point here is that you have to notice, you have to pay attention to what's happening to the media that you're consuming. And you need to take that control back 
by going down to a bookstore or a used video store, they're cheap, you know, especially if you get DVDs. Just get as much physical media as you can. Just start your collection. Thank you so much for listening to my rant about this topic. Again, like I said earlier in the video, um, as much as I just ranted about digital media, there is a form of digital media that I think is very important in this day and age. And it's the digital media that is created by individuals, not companies, individuals who want to put their work on some kind of platform for people to see it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here on YouTube with Culture Guys. I'm releasing it in March of 2024 here on my YouTube channel. Be on the lookout for more updates. Um, if you want to be updated on that and everything else that I'm working on, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified when I make new content. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Have a good week.